Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 7, NCRT. Chapter 3, Our Changing Earth. In this chapter, we'll read how the surface of the Earth is changing constantly. The uppermost layer of the Earth, that is the lithosphere, has number of plates known as the lithospheric plates. The landmass on which both the continent as well as the ocean bed resides is called a lithospheric plate. These plates are broken into small sections as you can see in the figure. These plates move around very slowly, just a few millimeters each year. Now what makes them move? It is because of the molten magma inside the earth. The molten magma inside the earth moves in a circular manner. This causes the movement of the plate and hence the plates causes the changes on the surface of the earth. Earth's movement is divided into two, ty two type of forces. That is the exogenic forces and endogenic forces. By the name you can figure out exo means outside, endo means inside. So the kind of exogenic forces are rivers, wind, sea waves, glaciers. And endogenic forces are natural calamities like earthquake, volcano, landslide, etc. Another point to note is the endogenic forces causes mass destruction and exogenics are naturally occurring and it doesn't cause much of destruction compared to endogenic. What is a volcano? A volcano is nothing but a ventilator on the earth's crust through which molten material erupts. When the lithospheric plates move, the surface of the earth vibrates. The vibration can travel all around the earth. These vibrations are called earthquakes. The place in the crust where the movement starts is called the focus and the place on the surface above the focus is called epicenter. Vibrations travel outwards from the epicenter as waves. Greatest damage is usually closest to the epicenter and the strength of the earthquake decreases away from the center. An earthquake is measured with a machine called seismograph. The magnitude of the earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. Any magnitude stronger and higher than 7.0 is classified as a major earthquake. In this page, we'll read about the major landforms. The landscape is being continuously worn away by two processes, weathering and erosion. So the definition of weathering is breaking up of the rocks on the Earth's surface. So by the word weathering, you can figure out that it has something to do with the change of weather. A piece of rock doesn't uh, stays the same after a few years. A continuous change of weathers act upon it as an agent which breaks it down. Then, then comes the erosion. Erosion is the wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water, wind and ice. So water takes away a lot of the soil and it, it deposits from one place to another. Wind again takes away, blows away all the uh, sand from one place to another. Ice again takes away the entire soil with it. Uh, once it starts melting, it turns into water and takes away the entire soil of that place. The eroded material is carried away or transported by water, wind, etc. and eventually deposited. So now we understand the meaning of uh, erosion and deposition. Now let's read about work of a river. What does a river do? There is a layer of hard rock on which the river flows. As the hard rock layer forms a descent or a steep, the speed of the flowing river increases. Now just below the hard rock layer, there is a soft rock layer. When the water finally falls, there is an undercutting in the, in the soft soft rock layer below the hard rock layer due to which the river water falls perpendicular to the ground forming a plunge pool. As the river enters the plain, it twists and turns forming large bends known as meanders. As the river approaches the sea, the speed of the flowing water decreases and the river begins to break up into number of streams called distributaries. The river becomes so slow that it begins to deposit its load. Each distributary formed its own mouth. These mouths are nothing but deltas. Now let's read about the work of the sea waves. What does the sea waves do? We know that the erosion and deposition of the sea waves helps in forming the coastal landforms, that is the beach. Now the sea waves continuously strike at the rock. If you see this picture, you can see the small arches and sea caves that are formed in the rock. These are due to the uh, continuous strike of the sea waves and over time they become larger and wider. Thus hollow like caves are formed on the rocks. They are called sea caves and at some places you can see sea arches are formed. And then we have another type of formation called the stack. Now let's read about the work of ice. What do they do? Glaciers are nothing but rivers of ice, we know that, and they erode the landscape by bulldozing soil and stones to expose the solid rock below. Now as the ice melts, they get filled up with water and become beautiful lakes in the mountain. The material carried by the glaciers such as rocks, big and small, sand gets deposited. These deposits are called glacial moraines. And last but not the least, let's read about the work of wind. 
Another type of agent of erosion and deposition is the wind. Now usually in deserts you'll see the shape of the rocks are mushroom types. So they are called mushroom rocks. The reason they are called mushroom rocks is because of the wind takes away the lower section of the rock more than the upper part. Therefore such rocks have narrower base and wider top. So when the wind blows it takes away the sand from one place to another and when it stops the sand falls are deposited and becomes low hill. Now let's answer a few question and see where we stand. First question, why do the plates move? The plates move due to the rotation of the molten magma inside the core. This pushes the pressure outside and due to this pressure, the plates move. Second question, what are exogenic and endogenic forces? So exogenic means outside, endogenic means inside. So exogenic forces that acts outside are river flow, uh, wind flow, glacier flow, etc. And endogenic forces are earthquake, volcano landslide third question what is erosion erosion is nothing but the wearing away of soil from one place to another by a means of transportation like wind water etc fourth question how are flood plains formed flood plains are formed by continuous flow of running water fifth question what are sand dunes sand dunes are nothing but the wind that blows in the desert and which carries the sand from one place to another sixth question how are beaches formed beaches are formed due to the sea waves. The sea waves are the big reason behind the formation of landforms near the coastal plains. And these landforms are nothing but beach. What are oxbow lakes? Oxbow lakes are formed due to the turning of the lakes sorry turning of the rivers and near the near those bend sometimes the water deposits and forms oxbow lakes take the correct answer which is not an erosional feature of sea wave cliff beach yes beach is the sea wave uh, takes away the sand and brings it again so beach is there sea caves are made out of sea waves and cliff is not cliff is is totally a different thing altogether the depositional feature of a glacier is Moraine, yes. We have read about this few minutes back. So it's moraine, which is caused by the sudden movements of the earth. Folding, yes. When two plates, that is the lithospheric plates, when they move, they form fold. Flood plain is caused by uh, running water. Volcano is is a vent, which, which is there to uh, take out the magma. Mushroom rocks are found in? deserts so the meaning of mushroom rocks are uh, they they are okay they are narrow from base and they are wide from top oxbow lakes are found in river valleys because it is formed due to river not deserts not glaciers match the following glacier so what is a glacier glacier is nothing but river of ice meanders so meanders are nothing but rivers beach beach is caused by seashore yes sand dunes deserts uh, waterfall is hard bedrock earthquake is vibration of earth so with this we have finished another chapter in geography i hope you found this informative if you like the video consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific do let me know